In February the 26th of 2019, the New York Times published a very important article. It was written by Jack Hitt. It followed one of the stings that I and my team and Mark Edward had done called Operation Pizza Roll. It proved, it proved Thomas John was hot reading Facebook profiles of people who attend his event, pretending he's getting it from the dead. The article was called Inside the Secret Sting Operations to Expose Celebrity Psychics. And I will put a link to this article if you haven't read it in the description of this YouTube video. Here's what it looks like for those of you who want to be able to make sure you got the right article. It looks like this. Okay. So a month later, or just barely less than a month later, Thomas John had three of his biggest fans um, do a video. And it was called Three Parents Reveal the Truth About Psychic Medium Thomas John. And this is much longer than the clips I'm going to give you today, because what I was able to do is I wrote an article about that video. I broke it down. Um, there are three women on there. I only analyzed one of them, Beth West. The the one who's leading the talk, that's Tracy. And she was until a couple months ago, Thomas John's assistant. I don't know what broke them up, but they are no longer Facebook friends. And she no longer works for him. So who knows? If anybody knows, I would like to know. The article I wrote was a few months after this video came out in Skeptical Inquirer, August 28th, 2019. I will also give you a link to this in the notes. Um, so these women believe, they believe many things that the New York Times article isn't talking about. They, the New York Times article does talk a lot about Facebook and finding information about somebody on the internet, which is hot reading. Um, and they say that it is not possible for them to have been hot read because Thomas John couldn't, could not know the information because it's nowhere on the internet. And it is um, like, well, Beth will say that she didn't create a Facebook page until after her son died and she did not, and she doesn't post often and she never mentions these things. The other woman in here, Linda, she does the same thing, but I didn't spend any time looking at her page. I mean, how many times can he prove this, that he's hot reading them? Okay. We're recording. Hi, everybody I'm here um, with two other uh, bereaved parents and we're here to tell you what we really think about Thomas John, the real truth. Today is March 24, uh, 2019. And um, Linda, if you would like to go first and um, tell everyone uh, your thoughts and opinions of Thomas John. Well, I personally love Thomas John. Uh, I have validations here that are not on the internet there's no way that anybody could find them. It's just that simple. So, and I had so many that I had to write them down because they're two pages. So it isn't something like, oh, there's two or three or four. I, I have a lot and I'd like to share them with you if I could. So we're gonna look at just Beth's um, recollections of what Thomas John said. She's gonna read them out to you. And then I'm going to tell you what we actually found. Now, what is really disheartening, and as I said, what this is not what the New York Times article shows at all, is at the end of this video, these women say, and I'm not going to show you all this part, I will give you a link to this video, which, by the way, the comments are turned off. You know, nothing nothing wanting to be hidden there, huh, Thomas John? It's on his, his uh, Facebook, it's on his YouTube channel. Thomas John Medium. It's got hardly any views, 14,000 views since 2019. It's not very many for a person who's supposedly communicating with the dead. And the, as I said, the comments are turned off, but I will give you a link to it so you can watch the whole thing. At the end of this video, as I started to say, 
these women go on and say that they're only trying to help parents. They're trying to help people in the memory of their own sons. Okay, that's that's great. Um, but helping people when you haven't done your own due diligence and you're recommending somebody who has just been outed on the New York Times, I mean outed, and multiple articles came out immediately after that showing that he hot reads and they are just oblivious. Well, they say they've read him. Well, they say that they're skeptical of people who are skeptical of Thomas John. And Trace even says she's skeptical. We hear that excuse all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm really skeptical. Mm -hmm. These women are in grief. And, you know, they are maybe not making great decisions. I don't know. But they go and they say multiple times, I'm not lying. I wouldn't make this up. Well, guess what, ladies? Nobody, not me, not the New York Times, not a member of my team, no one believes you're making this up or lying. We're saying you are not. You're recommending somebody who you should know because we have provided the evidence that he is hot reading people. If you were to look at the side of science, the skepticism side, at least with this man, Thomas John, you would clearly see that there is no ambiguity here. And your information that you say cannot be found anywhere is easily found on legacy.com, which is a free website. With a Google search, it's super easy to find it. And Facebook, your own Facebook pages, which I am not a Facebook friend of yours, and I can see the information. One more thing, Beth says she didn't join Facebook until after her son died. Well, her son had a Facebook page, and as of 2019, when I wrote the article, was still live. And her niece's Facebook page is still active. So when you say that you personally were not on Facebook, it doesn't mean anything. Your family is still on Facebook. Your son who has died, who you're grieving over, his page is still live on Facebook. It is easy to find. It is not hard for a motivated medium, a grief vampire like Thomas John, to go in there and pull off some details and repeat it back to you with some gobbledygook and boom you're there so let's let's take a look at this reading beth west and my son tyler transitioned four years ago and like linda you know i got a lot of validations from thomas that aren't found on the internet I mean, some can be found, but there are some that just are not on the internet. I mean, first, I never even had a Facebook account until my son transitioned. And I really just don't, I don't post very much. But some of the things that he gave me were um, younger male, you know, okay, that's no big thing. But he said, he's coming in and he's saluting. So is there a tie to the military? And I said, yes, you know, me, his dad, his stepdad, two of his grandfathers were in the service. And later he actually specifically said Air Force, which I was in the Air Force, his stepdad was in the Air Force, his grandfather and his father, all retired Air Force. Uh, you know, I, I guess you could probably find some of that, but to put all that together, I just don't see it. I mean, his grandfather retired from the Air Force so many years ago. Um, he talked about the method of his passing, which he knows, Tyler knows, is a very painful thing for me, and brought through some messages about that that I needed to hear. You know, like, his intention was never to hurt you. And, it, you know, he, he didn't want to cause you any pain and he's sorry about that, which, which are things that I think about quite often. 
he also got some very specific names, just like Linda talked about. Uh, William Bill, that's my grandfather, and Billy. Okay, so those are two separate names. Billy is my father, who has passed away. Um, my grandmother, Macy, which is not on the internet anywhere. His great-grandfather, Leon, and he also got ages of these people. So he said Leon is a very elderly gentleman, and he was 104 when he passed. And the name Leon cannot be found anywhere. He said uh, Amy, which is my sister. He said uh, Jane, grandmother, which is his dad's mother. He talked about um, two of my friends who have also lost children. And these are friends I didn't meet until after losing children. You know, that's how we met was through uh, those organizations. He brought up Sue which is a friend of mine, and Gavin, which is her son, which is a very unusual name. And Gavin had a message to his mom over a very relevant subject that we had all been talking about very recently with his daughter, with her granddaughter. He, she, he also came up with a name, Michael, which Michael was a, a friend of mine, a coworker of mine, and he passed away about three years ago. And then just a few minutes later, he said, Tony, well, Tony is Michael's mother, and he passed the message to her as well. He talked about very specific sneakers that Tyler used to wear, which are black and gray checkered sneakers. He wore vans, and the significant about these vans is um, my niece got married recently, and she had those shoes and one of Tyler's hats sitting in a chair to represent him. So that is what the shoes were about. And he said, and he doesn't just have one pair, he had lots of pairs, and that is so true. He got three for Christmas that year. He talked about a necklace that I wear that's very heavy and gold. Okay, now, people can wear necklaces, but to talk that it's heavy and gold, you know, it's, it's a cremation necklace with Tyler's ashes in it. He also talked about a bracelet that I wore in his honor. Well, we had been to Dominica, which is the country Dominica, and had been out hiking, and I lost my bracelet. It's an angel bracelet um, in pink, which is October birthstone, which my son was born in October. And I went to the hotel and told them I had lost my bracelet. I thought I would never see it again. A week later, they called and had found my bracelet. Now that is extremely significant. Wow. Talked about uh, a trip. You're going on a trip soon. Well, unbeknownst to Thomas, I was on a trip when I had this call. He talked about Cancun or something with the beach. And I said, yeah, we're in the Caribbean. And later he said, do you ever go to Turks and Caicos? And did you ever go to Turks and Caicos with your son? And I said, that's where I am now. And he talked about scuba diving. Uh, do you ever go scuba diving? And I said, that was one of the big memories that we had was we went scuba diving on Christmas day one time in Turks and Caicos. So he had so many validations that can't be found anywhere. Um, he had to get those from, from Tyler. So uh, I was trying to see if there's anything. Oh, he asked about a young female that has been having a really hard time since my son transitioned. And I said, oh, he's gotta be my niece. They were first cousins, but they were both only children. So they were more like brother and sister. And he, he said, Tay, who's Tay? And I said, that's my niece. He said, I wanna say Tay Tay, I love Tay Tay. And that's what he always called her was Tay Tay. Her name is Taylor. So, I mean, just incredible validations. And, oh, he said, who is Jim? Jim is my husband, Tyler's stepfather. And he wanted to talk about how the relationship, uh, he now sees that in a different light, you know, how teenagers are. They um, butt heads with their parents a little bit. And he uh, really looks up to his stepfather and um, learned a lot from him. So it's just very validating. And I think that's probably enough for right now. 
there's more of it. Okay, so some of the things that are happening here is these women belong to an organization called Helping Parents Heal. It's an online group that is supports mediumship, wants people to get mediumship readings to help them go past the grief. That is that's the norm in that group. So they're all sharing stories with each other. They're all intermingled. They know each other. Tracy's extremely involved in in this world and she's also Thomas John's assistant. So it's not hard to have stories leak from one person to the other. There's no control. She's uh Tracy completely believes everything in this um that this man says and thinks she's helping people. Um Beth mentions these organizations. She says, I didn't get involved until after uh, my son died and I met these other people in these organizations. Well, she's talking about helping parents heal. Um, a lot of the things that she talks about um, can be found, well, some of the basics can be found on her own bio, biography on the Helping Parents Heal website. It says, the, the day her son died, she says, it's the worst day of my life. It was my only child. His name is Tyler. He transitioned to spirit at the age of 17 due to suicide. I was two months from retiring from my military career and I was completely lost. Okay, well, right there, we have the day of his death, which makes it super easy to find his obituary. Simple. Um, she right there mentions how he died. And that he was a teenager and that she was in the military. So there's a whole chunk of that information right there. Then we go to, um, well, there's many ways of doing this, but here's how we, we did it. Is we went to her son's obituary because we know his name. We know the date of death. Um, it's really simple to find his obituary. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's not, uh, just Google your own family members and write the word obituary after it. Google your own name and the word obituary and see how many times you are mentioned in other people's obituaries. And once you're in an obituary, you have a lot of information about family members. It's right there. And then in some of these online obituaries, especially if it's more recent, in the comment section, people are commenting about their memories of that person. That's all just perfect for pulling out and using um, as you know, information to give to somebody like a psychic. It's really simple to find that information. So on her son's obituary, there's dates, military school, how he wanted to be a pilot for the Air Force. They're asking for donations to the Society for the Prevention of Teen Suicide, which is kind of a tell how he died. The obituary mentions his maternal great-grandfather, William Bill West of Jonesville, South Carolina, who was preceded by his maternal grandfather, Billy Wayne West, 1939 to 2011. We also learned that scuba diving is listed as one of Tyler's favorite pastimes. We pull up the obituary for Beth's own father. In that obituary, they mention that his wife's name is Macy, and she has also died. We also learn that Beth's sister is named is, is named is Amy, and that her husband, Beth's husband, is named Jim. That's in the obituary. And then we find the obituary for the great-grandfather, who was 105, not 104, Beth, when he died. And his name is Leon Alter. We found the obituary. Not a problem. Easy to find. You find one, you find them all. And finding the first one is just a few minutes. Um, within the obituary of Leon, we find that he's... There's all sorts of information about Beth and her siblings. He's survived by two children, Jim, who's married to Phyllis, and Jane, who's married to Ron, and their last names. The Tyler's Facebook page, as I mentioned, is still active. It's closed to non-friends, but it's public enough that you can see him in multiple military photos. We see him at the beach, and we find a photograph of those shoes that his mother didn't think anybody would know about. They're, they're black with dark gray and they're vans. There's the photograph. It's not hard for Thomas John to mention these. Remember, we do not have the audio 
we're just going from her notes and her memory. And if it, it he might have just said something about shoes to Beth. And then Beth said, yeah, he had a lot of van shoes. You know, we don't know. We don't know how that interaction happened because we were just relying on somebody else's memory. We really need the audio of these things if we're going to have be able to really get into depth of it. But on Tyler's Facebook page, there's the pictures of his shoes. On Beth's personal Facebook page is a photo of Tyler and his cousin. In the comments of that that um, photo, Beth calls her niece Tay Tay. Beth states these two are extremely close, almost like siblings. In various places, we know a lot about the Air Force. We know a lot about uh, um, the different, uh, many different things that are happening. Here's one. Here's the picture. I'm going to show it to you because I published it on my, um, in the article that I'm going to put in the links. Now tell me, tell me, Beth, and anybody else out there who still believes Thomas John, that it wasn't hard for him to find this. I found it in seconds, or one of my team members did. Here is Elizabeth West, Beth West, 2018, prior to the video she did. Here is her son. Here is her close cousin. And in the chat, it says, I love you, Beth. I love you too, Tay Tay. So give me a break when you say this information cannot be found. It's one thing to have faith, to feel like you're getting comfort from this. Okay, I get it. But when you transition into saying that's facts and that I'm recommending this guy, even though all the information to change your mind is out there at your fingertips and apparently they must have read it or at least knew about it because they're doing this video as a response video to the New York Times article. Come on now. You're recommending this man. The information is all over your Facebook page. He is extremely motivated to keep you as one of his biggest fans. They say many things about alluding to the New York Times article. Again, saying that they're intelligent women. Well, nobody said they weren't. It has nothing to do with intelligence. Maybe you need more street smarts to know when you're being conned. I don't know. But this has nothing to do with intelligence, three ladies. This has everything to do with being, just having blinders on and refusing to look at the evidence. We're showing you the screenshots. That article has been out for years. As far as I know, Beth and Linda are still big you know, followers of Thomas John. And I know Tracy still believes in this mediumship world. And she she's cut off from Thomas John for whatever reason, but she's still heavily into it. She's totally bought into it. The bracelet at the hotel. I mean, how odd is that for a bracelet to, you've reported your bracelet has gone missing and now it's turned up. How hard is that? They made it sound like that was a big deal. No, it's not a big deal. Also the, the heavy necklace. Well, it wasn't that heavy, but it was a necklace. From the years I've been doing this, evaluating psychics, I know it is extremely common to get ashes put into jewelry as a memento way of honoring your loved one. That's very common. Heck, I was in the uh, an elevator at a conference for something completely different, and people, two people were talking about it, that she just got her... Uh, her bracelet with the ashes of her family member. It's common. Again, we do not have the audio of what Thomas John actually told Beth. So we don't know how it was worded to her, but for him to throw out something about saying, Oh, you have some jewelry with his ashes in it is like, well, duh. That's common. <sighs> 
nobody said these women are lying. They say that's like a straw man. They're throwing it out there just so that it, they look like, oh, well, we're intelligent and we're not making this up. Nobody said you're making this up and nobody has said you're lying. We're saying that you're willfully ignorant of the facts and you're continuing to support somebody that you should have um, looked at this information as it came out and said, okay, I'm backing off now. I'm backing off. I'm backing off. But it's really hard. Once you have bought into this, once you think you are in contact with somebody that you are ex grieving, grieving, really grieving, how do you say to yourself, maybe that was all a lie and he really wasn't in touch with my son? I mean, that'd be like losing your son again. So for us to expect that these women are going to turn and 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 realize what's going on, Maybe it's too much. I don't know. Personally, I believe that you should know the facts and that you shouldn't perpetuate by endorsing this kind of information. There was a couple other things um, in the article that I wrote and in the video that they did. As I said, I'm going to leave this here. There was a story about Beth sitting on the edge of the, the bed and in a hotel and that um she felt um the uh, bed dip and that she kind of freaked out about it and then she says thomas john knew about that that he didn't tie uh her son didn't want to scare her and so that seems very specific. And her friends, the other two women are like, oh, there's no way he could have known that. There's no way he could have known about the bed, except that she probably told Tracy. And Tracy probably mentioned it to Thomas John or somebody else. These are people who are all intertwined with each other. And it's not uncommon for somebody who's in a stressful situation, sleep deprived, in a new spot, not sleeping well, to be in a hotel and feel um, like the bed, like a cat has jumped on the bed or anything like that. Because um, it's like sleep apnea and um, where, where your body is, it's, well, it's science. Okay. Look it up. It's where the body is, uh, you know, you feel things because you're not sleeping well. Anyway, I'm not going to go there because it's too long. These people are really trusting. They're probably wonderful people. They can't believe that a psychic would lie to them. And especially in such an egregious way. And that's common as well. People who are very trusting, a lot of times are not really good at seeing that other people would possibly do anything to them. Um, I really doubt if they're going to listen to anything I say. I know Tracy um, has been, people have been talking to her for the last, since this article came out in 2019. And this is, I'm recording this in 2023. They've talked to her about me and the articles and the evidence that I have many times. And she always shuts them down with a, you know, don't talk to me about Susan Gerbeck. She's an atheist. In other words, just don't listen to anything else she says. Just pitch your ear. Put your fingers in your ears. La, 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 la. I know she's done that multiple times. People have tried to talk to her and tried to ask her questions. How is it, Tracy, that you support this man when he did this thing? Look at this thing. Look at it here. Look at that. Oh, nope, nope, don't. That's coming from Susan Gerbic. Don't listen to any of that. As I said, I doubt anybody who's bought into it this far can possibly get themselves out of it without having to admit that their son has not been contacting with them all this time. And everything he said is just made up. I doubt it. I don't think these women are going to look at this video. Absolutely not. Why would they? And even if their family member looked at one of these videos or one of these, this article has been out for three years, they're probably not going to be able to talk to their mom about it or their family member because it's like walking on eggshells. They think that they're helping. 
They think Thomas John, by making up stuff and lying to them, is helping. And this is why we have this perpetuated, because one person um, is seems so convinced, and then they convince their friends, and then they convince their friends. I'd like to believe too, but I'm not willing to suspend reality. You just can't do that. It, well, I guess you could if you want to live in a world of fantasy. So I have had this article out since 2019. I, it's taken me a long time to do this video. Uh, as I said, I will put the clips in. I will put the the link to this video with the comments turned off because we can't risk anybody putting any information in the comments of this video that somebody might read. No, we can't do that. Right, Thomas? My comment section is wide open. So please feel free to have a discussion with me or anybody else in the group. I welcome them.